Okay. Here we are. Let's see if I can pull John away from Instagram, okay, where he's looking at baseball, baseball card vandals. That's great. It's two brothers who deface baseball cards, yes. mostly, but also football cards. And, and you know, Star Wars cards. Star Wars and Batman cards, whatever they get their hands on. It's very funny. Yep. It's childishly funny. Well... Don't you, go there for highbrow humor. Absolutely. It's all dick jokes. Welcome to the Film Photography Podcast. My name is Michael Rosso. I'm here in the studio with John Fideli. Hey. And... How super- you doing, baby? Super special guest, Mr. Mark O'Brien. Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining us, Mark. We have some hot topics. Hot topics. <laughs> Do you know that store? Why don't we? Yes, of course. Why don't we have any letters? Oh, uh, we brought, have some in the back. I, I thought I brought some. I have them in the read. back. You want me to go get them? No, letters. Actual letters. Like actual the, letters. I don't know. You're in charge of the letters. Oh, I've got. Hold yep. on. Let me go. For okay. They're well, in the back. On Mark's the table. going to get the letters. I just want to, while Mark's going to get the letters, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank Aunt Linda. Aunt Linda gave me this uh, good cute little bunny. Is that a good diva? Yeah. Bunny? As a matter of fact, John, while wait, waiting for Mark to come back, say so I upgraded my phone. Right. Finally. And I, what's amazing about it is the voicemail feature is much, much easier. So here, you know, we talk about Aunt Linda, and folks yeah. who've been listening a long time know Aunt Linda used to shoot one ten. The whole story. Right. Here is a recent Aunt Linda. Here we go. This is Aunt Linda. Michael, Aunt Linda, did you pick up the bird? Hi. What bird? So she's talking about a turkey. A sick bird at the vet? No. If you, if you spend X amount of money on your ShopRite card, you get, you a, get a free turkey or ham. Yes. So my $400. mom... $400. Four hundred dollars on the card, you get a free per- turkey or ham. So my mom's like, "Oh, do you, do you know? Do you? I never look at my receipts. I look at my receipt. I'm like, oh my god, I'm like almost four hundred dollars. So, you know, I spent some more money at Shoprite, and then of course you have up to a certain date to pick up the bird. And you blew it. So it, no, here we go. Michael, Oh my god. What's wrong with me? See, I I feel so frustrated with you. This is how my kids feel when I do. <laughs> Technical stuff, and they're like, "Oh, Dad!" Aunt Linda, did you, you pick, pick up, up the bird? bird. Okay, Hi. here's the, uh, here's so you know, Aunt Linda is my mother's sister. Yeah. So here's my mother. Hi, Mike. We qualify for the bird, so <laughs> you have to pick it up. They didn't even have one turkey here at our shop, right? So I wouldn't wait for the last minute. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here. Trying to see what size they were giving you. <laughs> Second here. Folks, I'm not laughing at my mother. I'm laughing with my mother. Yes. <laughs> Mark and I are laughing at your mother. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, then it just ends. She's just like rifling through her yes. receipt. <laughs> but here's one more. Oh, my God. Hi, Michael's dad. Uh, trying to track down that uh, head cleaner for the VCR. I, had, I have a dry cleaner that doesn't work. The wet cleaner... I think it does work, but I haven't got enough of it. And I can't find out where I could buy something like this. But it's, it's got to be the, the wet kind. So would you research it for me and just let me know? My dad uses a VCR. VCR. Oh. He's got two, three going at the same time. He's keeping VCR single-handedly alive. Yeah, so he's oh. got one recording Blue Blood upstairs. Oh he's got another one recording the baseball game downstairs. Oh, my. He hasn't and heard of On Demand, has he? He just not interested. All right. People get stuck. Tech. People get stuck in time. It's so weird. All right, one more. All right. Mike, just wanted to tell you, we took a ride to Uncle Mike. Okay, that's another, oh, another <laughs> death chat. It's death chat. That's what they call it, my family. <laughs> Talking about the dead. Anyhow, folks, thanks. thanks Can for... I tell you something? Your mother yeah. sounds sexy. <laughs> oh, stop it. She does. She kind of has that voice like Mae West going on. Oh, oh okay. It. I'll bring next time. I'll bring in a picture of my mom from 1957. I bet she was a good-looking woman. Yeah, of course she was. I bet she was. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, you bring that in. Okay. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the Film Photography <laughs> Podca- <laughs> Podcast. Uh, we have a few letters here. Let's open up with some letters. What do we got, Mark? Well, these came with the donations. Oh, we have a school camera donation yes. program that Mark has been for two days now helping sort through. And doing we, a great job. We just job. donated three huge boxes yes. to the school in Maryland. Do you remember the name? Thirty of it? cameras. Do you re- I don't remember the name. 
Okay, I'm gonna f- we're gonna find out next time. We'll have the name. We'll chat chat it up. Thirty cameras. Okay, we got this one gigantic box of Olympus um, cameras and lenses and um, accessories from Ron Yanoski in Longmont, Colorado. He said that the Olympus OM2S camera body and lenses and accessories belong to my brother mm-hmm. David Yanoski. Who lived in Tempe and was a superb amateur photographer who took thousands of photographs with this gear. He was a hiker and backpacker and traveled all over the western U.S. to take pictures. His great inspiration photographic subject was the Grand Canyon. Ooh. This equipment also captured many treasured fo- photos of family and friends. Hope it finds an appreciative home and inspires lots more creativity. What kind of camera was it? An OM2S. Oh. With. Databacks, remote stuff, mm. um, lenses. Oh, that's the big box you talking big, about. Yeah, yeah. So that's great you know, stuff. It's funny because you know you don't think cameras come in. You look at them. You're like, oh, here's a camera. There's stories behind all of these cameras about the people that use them. There are, you, you know? know, and sometimes it's sad, but I guess it's good because mostly people are passing them on. They're like, this was my father's. He used it. We mm-hmm, traveled mm-hmm. extensively. Uh, you know, every camera has a story. It's good to hear them. From uh, Mark Lang, we got enclosed are some 35 millimeter cameras, lenses, flashes, and equipment, which was used on a Canon AE-1. We visited your website, listened to some podcasts, and read about the program. Hopefully this equipment can be used to spark someone else's creative game. Yes. Great. Here's, here's one. I'm going to read one. It says two FPP. It was a Spotmatic SP2. Purchased his camera in '72 when we were stationed in Athens, Greece. So I guess he was a serviceman or service person. It was my constant companion for the next ten years. My oldest son put it to good use during high school years in the late 2000s. So it was passed down. Great. Take good care of it. I hope the next owner gets as much pleasure from using it as I did. We are going to start hyping up the Spotmatics. And yes. we're going to be start pushing these to schools yes. because they are a great basic camera for students. This was, was signed, but I can't read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Well, that's enough. Yeah. Well, thanks, folks, uh, who are contributing to the FPP. Uh, and a big a super thanks to uh, all the folks who uh, donate. Uh, some folks go to the site and click donate, and they pledge uh, X amount per month via PayPal. So Any amount is... Helpful, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So two dollars, three dollars, five dollars. Every six months or so, when I see them coming in at the beginning of the month, I send a thank you email out to these folks because I'm very appreciative. Because you folks are kind of funding, you know, keeping the lights on. Every little bit does help. And even when the gang's here, like tonight, when we go to the Dutch house, Dutch house, like you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna feed everybody. Yeah, we're up back there toiling away. Yeah. So you know. Thank you. And, of course, if you want to send an email, uh, podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. If you want to write a letter or type a letter, P.O. Box 264, Fairlaw, New Jersey, 07410. Wow. Brain fart. Mm-hmm. 07410. Thanks so much. Let's get right into a topic. This is an interesting topic. I think people are really going to like. Mm. 35 millimeter SLR camera. Yeah. Hot right now. Hot. 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 Hot, 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 hot. Whether you have a Canon AE-1, Pentax K-1000, whatever you might have. X-700. X-700. What three lenses for your SLR? Ooh. Oh. What should you have in your bag? I got an answer. Oh. You go first, because you're smarter. <laughs> I don't know if I'm smarter or not. Well, I guess if I were assembling a bag with only three lenses, I'd have a, a 50 millimeter normal lens, probably as fast as possible. So an f 1.4 mm. or one two, or whatever one point two. Yeah, so those better. Nikon's have one twos, right? Yep, they do. They do. The next lens would probably be a wide angle. 28 millimeter is pretty nice because for most of these cameras, 28 millimeter doesn't give you any distortion. Or very little distortion mm. if it's well made. If you want to go a little bit wider, 24 or 20 is also a, a good choice. The third lens, some people might say, well, they might they might say, uh, well, I'd rather than having the 50, maybe I want a 35 mm. because the 35 is a good street focal length. Maybe you, maybe you would say I want a 35, a really wide, and then maybe something that's a a short zoom. Frankly, if you're carrying three lenses and they're all primes, it's going to get kind of weighty. So maybe you want a short zoom like a, a 35 to 70 or a th- mm. 28 to 80, something like in that range. But you, you can um, put on your camera and um, zoom out a bit. Mm-hmm. But I would probably, that's the kind of bag you would maybe bring on a vacation where you've got those three lenses to do the capture things that are, you know, 
fairly close by. If right. you if you really think you need to have a <clears throat> 100 millimeter or, well, or a... About two, like an 80 to 200. 80 to 200. That's one of the most common zooms right. out there, right? There's nothing wrong with those. I mean, I, I think that uh, the modern lenses... The zooms are 70 to 200, something like that. That's a pretty nice range if you want to carry a big zoom. I I tend to, to go smaller. So what are, since we'll go around the table. So what will your what my be, three lenses? What will be your three lenses? A 50 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, and a 105. Okay. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. That's so for we'll Nikon's. All, all primes. All primes. Wow. I do, John. It makes makes me feel stupid now. <laughs> See, I told you you were smarter. <laughs> I'd probably go with like a, a a fast fifty. I agree with that. But then uh, I saw a nice twenty eight to seventy millimeter zoom. Oh, that's oh. good. Yeah, that's a good choice. I might go with that. Uh, and then I would probably get like an eighty to two hundred, mm. which I probably wouldn't use a lot. But you never know. You never know yeah. whose uh, window is going to look interesting. Yep. The street. <laughs> yep. Well, I my favorite lenses are. Thanks to Mark. Mark gifted me a lens. Oh, yes. I didn't get one. Let's say I'm taking out my EOS, which I commonly do. Uh, in the wide, I have three lenses: 24 millimeter, which I now have. Mm-hmm. Great wide angle lens. Terrific. Love it. That's not considered a pancake lens, is it? No. no. What's a pancake lens? Well, it, a pancake lens means it's just a slimmer, oh. tight lens. It's not wider. No. It's just, oh, okay. it's just a smaller. I, I own the 40 millimeter pancake mm. lens, mm. which on the smaller EOS cameras, it almost becomes a pocket camera. Almost. Yeah. Hmm. But the 40 millimeter lens, just for out and about on the street, yeah. is a beautiful thing. So I'm actually going to put that in my bag 24 millimeter, the 40 millimeter pancake, and the 300 millimeter because I like going to the zoo. Time to wake this show up. Uh, and I don't want to get pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> so you need some distance. From a previous show, folks. For, well, of course folks know what we're talking about. Right? I hope so. From Space Forms, my episode where the, 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 the lion lifted his tail and we all ran. Because <laughs> he started spraying everybody. I guess. <laughs> Screaming. I just, lo- I just love going to the zoo. And, I just, you know, you want to get in tight. I hear it's all happening, not the zoo. Yep. I do believe. And it keeps you far enough away from the monkeys. That's right. They can fling. And plus, sometimes, you know, in the exhibits, they'll be like, oh, here's the bobcat exhibit. And he's all the way in the back. Yep. Right. So yep. then you need a long lens for that. Yep. But so we should say, you know, for specific, we should say a specific destination. So if you're going to a city, yeah. would you still carry the same three lenses? No, not necessarily. See? Oh. Now we're so talking. You, you have to, I, I mean, if you only have three lenses, period, but I don't know anyone who only has three lenses. Yeah. Um, if I were, let's say, if I were, let's say I was going on a trip to Europe. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And, perfect. I would definitely have a wide angle mm-hmm. because there's lots of architecture there. And I might be inclined to have maybe a short zoom, a 28 to, or actually, if I were a 20, there's a Nikon has a zoom. It's a 24 to 50, which is a really nice yeah. for street photography because you get. So I would probably have that. Does that stop open pretty wide? Uh, not as much. Yeah. Well, but like if you're outside, eight, like you're outside. Eight. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying, let's say if you're in a church or something, oh, no, yeah, no, 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 and you want to get, you know, Michelangelo's tripod. artwork. <laughs> tripod, yeah. Oh. They won't let you bring tripods. Yeah, that's in. right. Okay. And, uh, and no, no, senor, senor, no you tripod. Have go, you have to lean your camera on the pew and, like, hold it steady. Yeah. Or your child's head. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would probably have, still have a 50, 1.4, mm-hmm. and then I might be tempted to bring a lens baby. Oh, that's a whole other topic. Uh, <laughs> can't afford that. I don't that. know if this count. Can't afford it. <laughs> Why not? Eh, it's a kind of a, you know. It's a cheat. It's, it's it's gimmick. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. Why? Yeah. Because it's, it's just but I like, like a vintage I like, lens. I like it. What it does. Well, what's a lens baby again? Does it go on top of your lens? or No, is it... it's a separate lens. And you can yeah, get them it's a different, Lomo lens. You can get yeah. them different mounts. It's not made by oh, Lomo. No, 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 it's made by Lens Baby in, in, out in Portland, Oregon. Okay, what is the oh. lens mount? All right, I'm thinking it's of whatever mount you have. They have Canon EOS. They get have out of Nikon. Town. No, I'm not. I'm not. So what? Town. Wait a they have, Hold the phone. They have, make all <laughs> kinds of lenses. Yeah, I, but why is this so special? This lens. What do you like about it? Because they are. They can act sort of like a tilt shift lens. And they, mm-hmm. with, if you have distortion, a, distortion. If oh, you have like a wide aperture. Well, you saw my. Lens dreams. Yeah, yeah. There were lens baby shots in there. So, so like soft f- edges. Soft focus. Yeah, yeah. Like what do they call it? Like bokens? Bokeh. 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 
Uncle June, how was Boca? Wonderful. I don't go down enough. It's not what I heard. About what? Boca. Boca? What do you call him? Boca. 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 Uncle June, how was Boca? Wonderful. I don't go down enough. It's not what I heard. About what? Boca. Boca? What do you call him? Boca. Boca. Hey, I'm gonna go down to Boca. Hey, <laughs> with, with me, Joey, down to Boca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would definitely have a, a, a short zoom in there. A 50 millimeter, and then, I don't know, I'd have to think about what the third lens would be if I was going to Europe. need something for landscapes. Yeah, you do. I would, maybe I'd go for an 85 millimeter 1.8. Well, what do you shoot when you're, like, in the Shenandoah Valley, when you're up in the hills, like... All right, too many variations. Oh. Need to move on. <laughs> oh, I'm interested. What would you take to the nudist camp? What'd you say this was? The Hibiscus Country Club. This is no country club. This is a nudist camp. <laughs> <laughs> 300 uh, millimeter. My, my glasses. <laughs> x-ray glass. Yeah, you don't need x-ray, x-ray glasses. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need x-ray glasses. All right. Okay. What else are we talking about, baby? Oh, we're going to be right back. Okay. New from k Records. 22 explosive hits. 22 original stars. Gallery. Oh, it's so nice to be with you. The great Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, the candy man can. Olivia Newton-John. If not for you. Hamilton, Joe, Frank, and Reynolds. Don't pull your love out. Derek and the Domino's big hit, Layla. Osmond's, Detroit Emeralds, Millie Jackson, Flash, April Wine, Charlotte's Pop Tops, Fortune. Here comes that rainy day feeling again. Joe Simon. He's got power in your kiss. Lobo. Possible Hot Butters, Popcorn. And many more. Get k 22 explosive hits now. 22 original stars and one great stereo LP. Only $3.99. The holiday season. What you get, Howard? A time that passes much too soon. Come on, guys. You're getting your picture taken. A special time you'll want to remember. See the camera, Howie? In pictures. To help make those pictures look as good as they can, make sure Kodak paper is behind them. If you don't see these words, it isn't Kodak paper. Ask for it where you get your holiday pictures. I do like my present, Howard. Kodak paper for a good look at the times of your life. Hey, we're back. So here's a topic folks might be interested in. You know, we talk about different types of cameras, right? And most people think of, you know, 35 millimeter SLR, which is a Pentax K1000. Canon AE1. AE1. Minolta X700. Yes. Whatever, Spotmatic, whatever you're thinking, but 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 if you start digging, especially on eBay.com, there were a series of cameras that were known as folding cameras. They took thirty. Are they thirty-five millimeter? Mm-hmm. They took thirty-five millimeter. I always think of one twenty medium format, but mm-hmm. but 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 there were a series of thirty-five millimeter, and they're quite unique. They have bellows. They have very well, short bellows. Yeah, they have very short. Bellows. Bellows. What do you got, Mark? Okay. In the early days of 35 millimeter cameras, the Barnack Leica, which like the Leica 2F or the 3F, things like that, was considered to be the epitome of a compact 35 millimeter camera. But but you know what? I'm sorry. What was the epitome of uh... the epitome? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How it was the was the Barnack Leica? Okay. It was a compact 35 millimeter okay. camera. But. But 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 what are often overlooked are the Retina series of cameras mm-hmm. made by Kodak in Kodak's German factory in Stuttgart, and these were called oh. the Retinas. They were the first 35 millimeter folding cameras, and they're so such beautiful little things yeah, because number one, you push this little button in, and this pops right out the front. You can see there's a small bellows with a lens the lens boards on. The, what they all have in common, the Retinas, is that they they are sort of like a little clamshell that opens. Opens up on the front, which conceals the shutter and the lens mechanism. I'm cocking this. Sorry. Do you have film in there? Yep, I do. Okay. XP2. Well, you're ready to go. <laughs> and Yeah, I am. Careful. And uh, the thing that makes them a little bit different um, than, say, a Leica is that all the controls are around the lens. There's the shutter speeds awkward, and the apertures. And it uses they use Compure shutters. They do not have a focal plane shutter in them. They're, they're lens shutters. Explain the, Can you briefly explain what does a normal 35 millimeter okay. SLR have compared to these? Like a, a normal 35 millimeter SLR has a focal plane shutter. Okay, and that's usually it could be a horizontally traveling one or a vertical traveling shutter. 
It's made out of metal blades. And they go across, like... Yeah, they, they go horizontal or they go vertical. Okay, good. But, and that is behind the lens, but right in front of the film. Gotcha. With, in the case of a lens shutter camera, the shutter is between the lenses. A common example today would be something like an Olympus XA. That's yes. a lens shutter camera. And so the retinas all had these controls around the lens. There's many versions of them. but So they're kind of bewildering because there are different models, such as the Retina 1, and there's different variations of, of a Retina 1, and these are called types that were produced in different years with different finishes, lenses, and so on. To dig deep, there, you can find a book on Kodak Retinas, but the McEwen's Guide is the place to start. The McEwen's Guide. The McEwen's. The McEwen's Guide. The McEwen's. What makes the Retina special is that starting with the original Retina all the way to the Retina 3C was the folding bed. Mm-hmm. And that's what the lens is mounted on. And so it, the nice thing, it makes them easy to carry. You can you close these up, they fit in a pocket, there's nothing protruding. All the folding Retinas, they all feature, like in Compure Leaf shutters, with the lens helical, the shutter speeds and apertures all in the front or on the lens and different models have may have uh, better lenses than others the one on the that i have a couple nice. examples here with me i have a retina one which is got a uh a kodak in a stigma lens and it's got, i think an f 3.5 that's not very fast of a lens may but i see I, that john no then i have a, a retina may i see I, that john no <laughs> A Retina 2A. So when you say Retina, you mean a Kodak. It's a Kodak, yeah. They're made... They're, uh, retina the, or Retina? Retina. These were made in Germany? Yep. And this is a Retina 2A. I've had this one for t- about 20-some-odd years. And this one features a Schneider um, mm-hmm. Retina Xenon lens. Did, and you he, say, did you say 50s? What's that? 1950s? Um, No, these are start 1930s. Ooh! Yeah, they... There's actually, the other difference in the retinas is there's pre-war and post-war versions. Right. And, right. and by pre-war, I mean World War II. But uh, after the war, some of them had, didn't, weren't folders. They, well, I'll, I mean, I'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Patience. Okay. So the folding retinas, they feature shutter speeds from B and 1 to 1 500th of a second. Typically have Schneider Xenon lenses, which is really, they're really as good as anything that lights put out. My personal favorite is the Retina 2A, which is manufactured from 1939 to 1954. And this one I have is a Retina 50mm F2 lens. And what I like about it, it exemplifies the sturdy mechanics and straightforward, straightforward control of manual cameras. Mm-hmm. And you can, like I said, you can easily fit that in a pocket. The 2A, it's got a beautiful lens on it, that Schneider lens. It's yeah. just gorgeous. Pretty. And these, and that is a true range finder on the Retina 2, right. 2A. The Retina 1s came, did not have range finders. Yep. You can, but they had a little attachment where you could attach an external range finder device. How do you focus? To, to use them. Oh, the focus was right These here. These are uh, mod. If we were, oh, okay. If it was like 1950, John, or 1940, these yeah. would be considered modern marvels. They were, they were, and they were not cheap. I would have to look up the prices at the time, but they were, uh, they were expensive. Now let me cameras. ask you, why are, what, what is this knob here? It says plus X, super double That's X, a- infrared. <laughs> that was just a way it's to the guide. Tell, for you to remember what film. Uh, it's a, you could call it a film minder, a reminder to what what you've got in really? the camera. So this they didn't have post-it notes back then. This doesn't do anything. No, no, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, just a note for yourself. Yeah, and um, I guess there were only five stocks they, available. They didn't have much available back yeah. then. And so the Retina, I have a, a Retina three C here, which is a range finder, but also has features a meter, a selenium meter, and it has interchangeable front lens elements. So you, really? this has a fifty millimeter lens on it now. They had a thirty-five, and they had an eighty, and you, you would take out that front element. Mm-hmm. And get the 80, or if you put the 80 on here, it sticks out way out in front. So it doesn't make it very pocketable. Screws on. It's a, it's a little um, bayonet. <laughs> it fits in and, and turns, yeah. And is there an adapter for your viewfinder? When yes, you, you can buy it. the little adapters, and it would just go on top. Right. And, and so you'd have the different view viewfinder mode on there. I mean, this would be back back in the day. I mean, this would be your family camera. You'd buy oh, this, oh, and that's you, what you would have. That, exactly. exactly. You would take this on trips. and all and, you need. It's all you needed at the time. And these are, I mean, think about the era, right? We're talking right. 40s. I mean, these were available into the 50s? Into the late 50s, yeah. So just think of how, from a technological perspective of how better these are than, I mean, most 
folks had just the Kodak brownie, right? Right. Get or, the brownie. And they're far superior to an Argus. Yeah, okay. And then priced accordingly, I'm sure, because they were all made in Germany. In 1959 is when they stopped producing these folding retinas. Okay. And so you would see retina, ca- na- retina names on other Kodak AG in Germany produced cameras, but they were what we call solid bodied. They're not they're not folders or rigid bodied. And so they they um, so you see the retina reflex, or retina SLR, those also were lens shutter SLRs. They came out with a retinet line, which were de- which were designed to be cheaper versions of the retinas. Retina et. <laughs> right, but they didn't. They weren't folders, were they? They were folders oh. up to a point, and then only three models were. The rest were rigid body. Okay, I know you folks at home can't see, but these little cameras, they they pop. The front pops out, and the lens pop like a little bellows pops look, look out. Looking up on the internet, these were um, pretty successful cameras. They were really, I mean, people appreciate the quality of the build and the lenses. But imitation is the best form of flattery, right? So Agfa came out with a carrot series of 35mm cameras. Carrot? K-A-R-A-T. Delicious. Originally mm. designed to use the Agfa rapid cassettes, which were that took 35mm film, but they oh. were designed differently than your standard 35mm cassettes. Later on, they they had one one model that took 35 millimeter. The other difference is that the re, the um, Agfa cameras, the re, the carrots, they did not have a front cover over the lens. The lens collapsed into the body, like just like these do, but, but there was no clamshell cover. over it. So cheap. It was yeah, it was uh, exposed. <laughs> the uh, they also had Compure Rapid shutters, and the cheaper models had Agfa Solinar or Igastar lenses, but the more expensive models had Schneider Ber- Schneider. Ig- Igastar. I think you're making some of these words up, Mark. No, no. <laughs> carrots. So the Igastar. Carrot 36 oh, use standard 35 millimeter cassettes. If you can find one of those, it'd be it's a good camera. And then Zeiss Icon, which we've talked about before, mm-hmm. came out with one called the Contessa. Yeah. Yes. The Mark Dalzell has one of these. And it's if a not beautiful little camera. It's a th- 35 millimeter. It's got a rangefinder on it. It's, it's got very a very Art Deco looking. Look oh yeah, a selenium meter. This has been on the oh show before. God. What show? This this show. What show? This show. What show? What show? This this show. What show? This show. The Contessa. Show? The the Nike the the uh, an icon the Zeiss icon Contessa has been on the show. On this show? Yes. What show? Mark o- Mark O'Brien Dalzell brought it in. What show? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Dalzell. Yeah. So the Contessa is a really beautiful example of a, a 35 millimeter folding camera. What's that little thing that flips out? Is that, that hold your drink? That <laughs> this thing here? Yeah, that's that's, that's the cover the over over the meter. Meter. So it's got a it's got a oh. a. Uh, Does that open when un- the camera an comes uncoupled out? meter? Did that pop open when the when the yeah, when you opened the camera, or you had to open that manually? Push that little thing. So as long folks at home, there's this little that's metal great. cover that covers your meter if you're not using it. So. As long as people kept that covered, that would protect the selenium. It Michael, would. they thought of everything. And uh, the rangefinder is very accurate. It's a, it it also has a little cover over the lens, just like the like the retinas, mm-hmm. but it drops down rather than to the side. I'm not sure uh, what they go for on eBay these days. I really haven't looked. Let me take a look. Zeiss Icon also they made the Contessa from 1950 to 55, so these are mid century modern cameras. And the Contina 1 and the Contina 2, which were produced from the 1950s, mid-50s. And they have a, not as good a lens and so forth as the Contessa. Mm. But the beauty of these folding 35 millimeter cameras is their compactness. In another show, I talked about the Raleigh 35, which is compact and minute compared to these. They don't go for much. Everything is, uh, when you have the, the front little... Door closed there. Everything is hidden and well protected, so you can put it in a pocket, a camera bag, or whatever, and it's not going to get banged up. They go from like fifty to eighty something dollars. So, so if you're looking for Reasonable. a classic manual rangefinder that does not start with a letter L, <laughs> you look for a Retina or a Contessa. That's good advice, and these are special cameras. And when they're folded up. They pretty much can fit in your small bag or pocket. Very good. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. When we come back, we're going to be talking about something I'm really not that interested in, but most people are. Niker mats. Oh, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> That's cool. Freedom. Minolta's Freedom Line. Freedom. Great gift anytime. Freedom. It's on my list, you know. Freedom. <laughs> 35 millimeter and totally automatic. 
Happy holidays from Minolta. This Christmas, we're readier than ever to catch all the action with this brand new Kodak Extra Light Camera. The built in flip out flash means you're always ready. Ready in a flash to get those sharp, clear pictures you might have missed. Catch all your Christmas fun with a ready in a flash Extra Light from those built in flash people at Kodak. Hot diggity dog! We're back! We're back! Some of us, most of us. Talk about Nike or Mats. When you say Nike or Matt, do you mean a Nikon camera? Yes. Were they called Nike or Mats? Oh, is it 120? No, they're 35 millimeter. 35 millimeter. So before it was like F1. F1. Is F. It, it, There's no okay. F. Before the Nikon F. And the S. They, they were called Nike or Mats? No, that, they came out after the Nikon They F. did? Yeah. F. Did you know about the Nike Rex 8? <laughs> yes, I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. We're not going to be talking about that right now. Who made that? It wasn't probably wasn't Nikon. <laughs> uh, made in Japan. Yeah, stupid. I think it was made by <laughs> by some other company because Nikorex was used on a bunch of cameras at Nikon. They were all made by like uh, Mamiya. No whatever. way. Really? Yeah. This is the Nikorex Eight. You're saying there were other Nikorexes? Yes, they were 35 millimeter Nikorex. Nikorexes. Amazing, right? Nikorex. Yeah. Yeah. Who knew? And they were either rangefinder cameras, or point and shoot type stuff, or they were. There was one that was a uh, 35 millimeter SLR. Okay, so I'm intrigued. What What are the Niker mats? Because I'm confused, right, John? Yeah, right. I am too. I always okay. see them, and I don't know how, where it fits in the uh, repertoire. Okay, yes. so Nikon, the Nikon F was considered to be the pro camera at the time, right? Mm. They had a Nikorex cam- SLR that was sold for those who couldn't afford a Nikon F, but it was made by another company. They weren't necessarily all that great. Well, first of all, Japan... Hi. <laughs> they had <laughs> they, what they called the Nikomat. There was a problem. Zeiss Icon thought it sounded too much like a, Ze- like a Zeiss Icon. What? I- Zeiss Icona. Like Nico like, Matt, it sounds like yeah. Icona. Different countries, though, right? Different countries, but they thought there was infringing upon their name in some way. Okay. So they, everything outside Japan was called Nicker Matt. Ah. So you can't confuse that with Ico. See, there was a camera called Ico Matt. That, oh, well, that's that they put out the Matt. And so they thought Nico Matt was too close to their to the Zeiss Icon name. So. Outside of Japan, they're called Nikromats. In Japan, it's Nikomat. In the early 70s, they produced the first one, model the FT. Well, what about the Nico? Nike, we'll talk about Nikomats. Nikomats, yeah. The Nikomat FT. Okay. They, Whoa. Yeah. Didn't Canon have a problem with that? They had an FT as well. Well, that was later. No, FT was 1965. Oh, really? Yes. No. I guess Canon didn't, didn't think it was a problem. Okay, please continue. Yeah. They had a, the Nikromat FT, and there was also another Nikromat at the same time called the Nikromat FS, which means, I guess, fairly simple because it didn't mean <laughs> it didn't have a light meter in it. Because it didn't have a light meter, it didn't have to have the typical Nikon little bunny ears capturing on the prong mm. for the metering prong to, to activate. So you could put um, any lens, on, any Nikon lens on that Nikon FS, but it had no metering, so it didn't matter. You had to meter, do everything manually. I'm not sure why they made that one. I actually had one. They're not that common. Nikromat FT was very, became very popular, and the, what distinguishes the Nikromats from all subsequent models of Nikons, but what they have in common with the Olympus camera is that the shutter speeds are in a ring around the lens. Mm. And so it's atypical for any other Nikon. No other Nikons have that feature except for the knicker mats. The other thing about those is that they had the prism was fixed, unlike the Nikon F. So they were pretty much what you would call a typical SLR. They're very well made. They're heavy bodied. And they have the typical plus minus in the viewfinder with a little arrow to figure out where, where your exposure should be. Totally all manual. They have shutter speeds from B to one one thousandth of a second. They are were very, very well built cameras. It wasn't until the FT, then they came out with the FTN, which was replaced by the FT2. The FTN had quite a long run of production. The FT2 is the one I would recommend for mm. people to, to 
acquire because it ha- one it has a fixed hot shoe on top of the prism. Hot shoe. Hot shoe. It takes a modern LR44 cell Good. For, for for metering. All the other ones took the took the uh, PX625As. Those the big the big the big button cells. Yeah. yeah. The FT2 was the last um, of the knicker mats. Well, actually, it wasn't the last ones to use the the bunny ears for the non AI non-auto indexing lenses because Nikon EL had the same system but the EL was a different a little bit different camera which I'll talk about in a minute the Nikromat FT3 was the last of the Nikromats that had the typical shutter speeds around the around the, the lens and and all that and that the but the, it was also did not require you to use the bunny ears because they had auto indexing lenses the mount the lens mount is the same for all these. Yes, they're still F, F mount lenses. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just them how you activate the metering. Okay. The Nikromat EL, which stood for electronic, and that had an electronic shutter. It did not work without batteries. It also used the bunny ears to for the auto for non auto indexing lenses, and that was then followed by the EL two, which which is used regular AI lenses. So the Nikromats were a short life. I mean, a decade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, by about but about the time they started producing the uh, Nikromat FT3 and the Ni- Nikromat EL, they already had released the Nikon FE and and FM, which be- which were much smaller and more well, they were more compact. They're easier to use. Became in their own right legendary cameras. Mm-hmm. But the Nikromats, if they're they're heavy, they get no love. They, and the people they don't get the love they deserve. I mean, you have one, and the darn things just keep working fifty years after they were made. Were they popular over here in the states? Oh yeah, they, they were? were very popular because if you couldn't afford a Nikon F, okay, you would get a Nikon mat. But then there's a lot of professional photographers who had an Nikon F, and then the Nikon mats as their backup cameras. Mm. Because they use the same lenses, everything, okay, um, all the you know other accessories, and uh, they were and they're really robust. They're very well built. That's the F line in all of its iterations, like the two and the three. Yeah, I mean, what what, what year are those cameras? The the F two, the F two came out uh, Uh, in the seventies, seventies, late late seventies. Yeah, of these Nikromats, what is the one to have? My personal favorite is the FT two. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, I got like five back there now. And oh, they I, really I think so. Yeah, they 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 they're great cameras. I mean, the thing is, we talk about you know, are they good school cameras? The hard thing for someone to to understand is the Nikon twist mm-hmm. <laughs> because you have to move the little lever on the on the camera, the indexing lever, the little prong that comes down. To a certain spot near where the when you so when you put the the lens on the bunny ears engage with that, and then you turn the lens to the left all the way to the left, mm. and then all the way all the way to the right. What that does, this is what the, they mean, but they're non non AI lenses, non auto indexing. You have to tell the camera what the maximum or what the widest. Um, aperture is on your lens, and so that's every how every time you change a lens, you every have to time do that? you change the lens, you got to do that. I, I mean, it just it, it's, it becomes if you use a Nikon F, an F two, or the Nikkor mat. I never do that with the F three. F three, you don't have to because oh, it uses non AI lenses. Great. I mean, it uses AI lenses, not non AI. AI. But in- the F three has a little button you can push in there, which releases that little metering prong that travels along the, mm. along the oh, edge. It's not that big of a deal. You have to basically catch the prong, divot for it, and you have to right. put the lens on it right. to fit in there. It's right? a little thing. Yeah. yeah. And so you, it's just called the Nikon twist. And <laughs> do it's not like the, what was the one in the, um, the Jetsons twist? or whatever that was? Called the Jetsons twist? I don't know what you're talking about. Or the Flintstone <laughs> something twist. No, no, it's Jetsons. Jetsons, okay. Tune in, swivelers! I got a treat for you. A new song by Judy Jetson. And to keep it in the family on the drums, her father, old space dust daddy himself. And we're going to kick off with a drum solo. Go, go, boom, boom. Leslie would know. Yeah, she would. Uh, anyway, the, the knicker mats, they're a good value. They don't go for a lot of money. And the only problem that you will see as they age is that there's a resistor inside the, the lens mount so that when you change the, the shutter speeds, it, it activate it changes the, the value of the resistance, which is your metering. The metering will go wonky after a mm. while if, you're, if, if, they have a, if that gets dirty. 
and you can flush that out. But the thing is, these cameras are getting on over 50 years old. Some have had harder lives than ever than others, and they probably have those problems. Mm. I'm encouraging folks to you know get a light meter app and don't worry so much yeah. about the in-camera me- meter, especially on a, a tank like this. Yeah. So this Nikromat FT2, you can get one on eBay from anywhere, no joke, from $10 up to $100. Yeah. And there's a lot in between in the $35 range. Many of these don't have a lens on them. Right. So with a lens, anywhere between $40 and $100. Yeah. That's just not much for a, a well-made camera. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I, you know, as you know, and you folks at home know, I'm not that much of a Nikon guy. Hmm. Even well, though I do have a, huh. a Nikon Rex 8. If you go to Random Camera Blog, I have a full description of all the different models of Nikon mats. Oh. When they were produced... With, along with images of each of each model, so go to Random Camera Blog and you'll and search for Nicker Matt and Random you'll come right to it. Camera Blog. I'm going Google Random Camera Blog Nick or Matt. I'm gonna see two Ks, right? Yeah. yeah. The Nikon Nicker Matt. Today's bargain? Question mark. Is that true? Yep. This is the one. Yeah. Uh, also, you have Nicker Matt FTN. It just feels great. <laughs> hmm. What are you uh, doing with that camera? And then you also have random camera blog shooting by the seat of my pants. Oh, that was with a Nikromat FS with okay. no meter. Wow. You know what, Mark? Mr. Mark O'Brien, you are a great proponent of all things Nikon. Thank you. And now, I don't know what's going on here. Now, John's, he, he dumped his Minolta for a Nikon. Yeah. You got the Mark Dalzell with the Nikon. Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. What? Nikon, 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 Nikon. Nikon, Nikon. Nikon. What? 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 They make good sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have a soft spot for Pentax Spotmatics. Yes, you do. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Hey, you're welcome. That was uh, entertaining and uh, uh, stimulating. We are going to be moving on, folks. Moving on. Because we have to um, go to the Dutch house. We're going again. Yes. It's our monthly visit to the Dutch house. Oh, yes. Are we going Dutch? Yeah. No, we're not going Dutch. No. All the fine folks that contribute to the FPP are... Going to put food in my belly. That's right. They're going to feed us to fuel this show. Need fuel, folks. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank everyone for listening. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. We're on Instagram, Film Photography Project. Uh, John is on Instagram. At uh, Big Head Sue. Your Big Head... Doesn't even know. I don't know. John is... I'm going to look up. Big Head Sue something... John doesn't know his oh, own. Oh, Big Head Sue 2, T-O-O. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Who's See? Big Head Sue 2 1? I don't know. Oh. Big Somebody Head Sue 2, T-O-O. That's your bird, right? That's what I just said. Okay, good. Uh, Mark, are you, are you just Mark, the Mark O'Brien? On Instagram? Yeah. No, MFO it, photos. MFO photos. MFO photos. Yep. MFO photos. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you um, want to know what I'm up to personally, film shooter Mike. I knew that. Film shooter Mike. Matter of fact, let's see. Spend a couple of hours on uh, Instagram. Here's what I uh, posted on Film Shooter Mike yesterday. Here we go. Oh, that guy. <laughs> I like the okay, thank I, you. I could just sit there and put that on a loop for an hour and just... That's your type of music right there. Well, I'm the big Gary Newman fan. You're like... Uh, you like electronic music that's whimsical. I do. I and do. that is whimsical. It, it certainly it, is. But the thing is, it looks like a young kid doing that's it. That's a young kid, Is yeah. he making those songs up? Or are uh, there songs that exist that he's just lip syncing to? That is... Uh, the guy's name is... Um, is on is on Instagram. Yes, uh, Carter Vale at V A I L Music. Because he has a bunch of those songs. Uh, he has a bunch of these songs. Here's another one. That's what I just said. And then here's another one. Wait a minute. Is this the one with him standing by the grill? Oh, that's a great one. The one standing by the grill. He just disappears. I like my ladies like I like my coffee. Okay, we'll play oh, that that's one. A little, <laughs> that's a little much. 
Anyhow, folks, you get the idea. Yeah. Instagram, I love it. We're all on Instagram. Drop us a line. Say, hey, I listened to the show. And mm. I'll say, what show? Right. Hey, where's my premium? Exactly. <laughs> And uh, next uh, show that Mark's back on, we'll do our review of the Dutch House Burgers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.